Well, the titles of your Cecil Younger books to me are so interesting. That I wanted to read the books just to find out where did he get that strange title, like the curious eat themselves? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Or the music of what happens? Well, it's, it's again, it goes back to how I write these books, and I'm not recommending this as a way to, about, about going about it, but often I'll start with just this one thing, a question. Or, and it, a lot of times it comes from my reading, a piece of poetry um, where, uh, well, back years ago in college I read in a notebook uh, by a poet named Theodore Rethke, who I really adored. He was a Pulitzer Prize winning poet. He taught at the University of Washington for years, although I never got to study with him. But just in the margins of one of his notebooks he wrote, The Curious Eat Themselves. Hmm. I thought, wow, what does that mean? And that's, uh, I've pondered on that. And so I just tucked it back in the way in my head. And then uh, when a publisher asked me what the title of my second book was, I just, just <laughs> came, to my, came to my mind. I said, The Curious Eat Themselves. And at that time, I was, uh, for my second novel, I was working as an environmental crimes investigator in the Arctic. I was living in Fairbanks where my wife was going to graduate school. And so this whole the theme of The Curious Eat Themselves and uh, I was working in, in, uh, like in the oil patch up north and thinking about how, as we use our resources, we're depleting our resources. And, and so uh, it just became a, a theme. All the books title, I usually start with a title as, a, as sort of an umbrella for the different themes that I'm hmm. working on. The music, What Happens, came, comes from a, an old Irish fairy tale. Um, the Big Both Ways just came from that comment by Robert DeArmond who said the, yeah. the inside passage is like a big river that flows both ways. You, you mentioned in, in the dedication to, in one of your uh, Cecil Younger books that uh, your wife, uh, Jan, was a, a great help to you and, and mm -hmm. actually taught you to write. <laughs> As a, I was wondering uh, in what ways she, she did to assist you. Uh, well, in a couple of different ways, I think. Uh, one is that I mean, I, uh, as I go around and talking to young writers, and that supportive spouses have done more for the arts than you know the MacArthur Foundation. <laughs> I mean, a supportive spouse does more for an artist um, than than anyone else can. Um, and so, you know, in that way, she she made it possible for me to write. And in the other way, that um, dedication came from a book. Um, Death in the Language of Happiness, and with the epigram from that came from a piece of poetry by Ossip Mandelstam, a Russian poet, who said, uh, Oh, indigence at the root of our lives, how poor is the language of happiness. Mm -hmm. What has happened before will happen again, but still the moment of meeting is sweet. Mm. And uh, I, it's one of those that I read and I thought, oh, I just love that, I don't know quite how. But, uh, you know, developing the language of happiness uh, has been a theme in my, you know, relationship with Jan for, we've been married 31 years, so in that way she taught me how to write.